because obviously a lot of people a lot of people are struggling but we are we are twofold aren't we because we are responsible for our business but also that is what our families was yeah is needing and and i've found it's been a rude awakening for me because our business is just my sister and i yeah and uh my dad and his brother founded it yeah and my uncle sadly died in the early 90s so it's basically been mum and dad and then my sister and i've taken over feels a long time but i think it's only been sort of seven eight years now and I really struggle because this is, you can throw anything at me and I'm fine. But because this can affect my children, I had a real, that first week, I was almost paralyzed yeah. with this wobble thinking, you know, just any business thing you just throw at me, I can sort it, it might not be perfect, yeah, yeah. but I can do it and I'll bring in whatever help I need and, and all this stuff. I just found myself really paralyzed because this was about everything. This is everything that I've worked for, that the families work for. And you feel it. And, and I think having that close link between the two that non-family businesses don't have, I'm not saying they're not panicking like crazy, but it's a different thing. Totally. We totally. lose everything, everything that we've known yeah. if this all goes wrong. And I just felt, with, then with the added health issues as well, potentially affecting, my dad literally ticks every box for <laughs> coronavirus. So we've got to keep him well out of everybody's way. And then I've got my little kids. I'm just thinking, this is horrific. <laughs> I know it is, and it was a whole new experience for me because I'm not used to feeling like that. So that, that's a really, it is a really good point because the family business does what it says on the tin, and it mm. involves the two most important things in your life right now, which are family and business. And um, and how many kids have you got? I've got two. You've got two. Are they little. They are um, ten and thirteen. Okay, all right. I've got three year old who's just had had a coronavirus. Um, oh, yeah, it was horrific. It was horrific. Well, I don't know that he did, but I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah. Um, so I th oh. yeah I think it's really and I actually I just read an article on the don't judge me the Daily Mail and it was about um, a husband and wife running a marketing agency trying to homeschool children and they both got coronavirus and they're trying to keep a business afloat and they don't qualify for any grant I mean it's just the whole thing it's like but that is not an unusual story no it's not though that's the thing and I I fully appreciate what the government is trying to do nobody's been in this position no. but it is scary how many of us are falling through the cracks yeah yeah um, I mean we we've been great we've got our, our commercial tenants and our, our residential tenants so far have been really good if there's been issues with payment chat with them we're coming up with what we can do but just fundamentally we are relying on everyone else i'd love to go and get a loan yeah but we can't get it i'm presuming you're the same and yeah. and so that webinar was really useful to sort of think right okay what do we have what don't we have mm. pretty much everything okay so on that basis <laughs> but actually i think that's more beneficial to us than some of these companies who know they can apply for a loan but aren't getting one mm. at least we know yeah, now yeah. right this is what we can get this is what we can't get so we where know where we are yeah yeah okay so tell me about the business because i've had a, a read up of it but obviously tell me from your tell me your yeah story. so so spenbeck is a second generation uh, property development and lettings business uh my father and uncle started it in 1981 basically to regenerate the lace market in Nottingham. It was full of former lace warehouses, fire damaged, uh, bombed. Nobody wanted to touch it. The area it was really, really bad. So my dad being my dad went, this seems like a great idea. I read a lot about your dad. <laughs> yeah. Dad he gets, he gets, <laughs> yeah, he gets out there a bit. So uh, yeah, my dad and his brother basically badgered the city council for grants at the time. They thought about flattening the whole area and putting a ring road through it. As you do, but fortunately they decided not to do that. And dad and his brother basically kick-started the regeneration of the lace market. So we now have the highest concentration of listed buildings anywhere in the country. Wow. And it's a beautiful area and it's now the creative quarter, well, it's part of the creative quarter, which is um, EU funded and it's just a beautiful hub for digital creative industries, really but anyone. Got Amazing. some lovely residential buildings in there and and we've played a massive part in that. So we've got 50,000 square foot of, I won't lie, beautiful old Victorian wow. warehouse buildings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's lovely. But wow. um, so my sister and I run it and that's it. We don't okay. have anyone else. So how so, did that come about then? What were you doing before? What was the I, to Well, you know, you know how it is, I'm presuming. You've <laughs> been brought up um with uh, with your parents or maybe your dad just going oh this is you know this is amalia she'll be in the business one day and you're like well hang on a minute maybe she won't and i had that and i was determined not to do it but i love business 
I absolutely love business. Um, so I became a business teacher. Okay. I taught business and sociology for almost eight, nine years, but kind of always had in the back of my mind that I would be joining at some point. Yeah. And then kids came along and I tried to balance the two and I'll be honest, failed miserably. Um, and then at the time my sister had joined the company because dad had got health problems. We lost our uncle in the nineties. Yeah. The dad was sort of running on his own. And so Victoria went in and then I just thought, I had a friend who went, you know, with all that business knowledge you have, it's all theory, but apply it to the company and you've got the flexibility and the joy of working for the family business. And so that's what I did. And, and, how's, it, and how's, it been, now. how's it been since then then? Was it everything you thought it would be? Has it been more challenging? I think it's been what I thought it would be, but, but I thought it would be challenging. But it's, it's like anything, it's the trade-offs, isn't it? So, you know, sometimes when I'm out on a Saturday night and dad rings for something, I have to remind him it's a Saturday night. <laughs> can we do this on Monday, please? You know, or can you pay me colossal overtime? Whereas, you know, when you have children, it's awesome. If they're ill, I can work from home. If it's sports day or a show, I can just go. Um, it's the harder bits are much harder yeah. and the better bits are much better, I think. Amazing. And it's the the heuristics and the shortcuts that we all have which is awesome and then you see people going you didn't even you haven't finished a sentence how do you <laughs> you just know yeah um yeah. which is lovely we have some awesome contractors and people that we've worked with for either decades or not very long at all and they just get us and we get them it's quite you'll have it when you're i think that's small and how the family dynamic it just infiltrates everything you do and it's quite selecting, I think, in a good way. So tenants or contractors, they either get it or they don't get it. And it kind of just filters out. And we've got a lot of family businesses work for us that wasn't designed like that. Mm. I think it's just... You're just living it, it reading it. And by osmosis, it reaches all of your supply chain yeah. and your stakeholders. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a lovely thing. And we didn't realise we were just doing this, this thing for a, an awards application. And I sort of went, hang on a minute. <laughs> all but one of our contractors are family owned businesses amazing and we're like okay that's good and it was nice that we didn't sell out for that either yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and kind of so, talk to me about your relationship with your sister oh it's a fun one <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's an interesting one so i'm the older one right by six years but she was in there first so she was in there five years before me yeah so when it works it's amazing and when it doesn't it's not great and and we're all, you know we're honest about it yeah. And are you yeah. only two siblings? Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's literally just the four nuclear family in the business. So we're very different, but very complementary. And when we are in the zone of knowing it's complementary, it's brilliant. Mm. And it just works. Mm. And it's not always the case, as, as you'll know, working with your sister. But it matters more, which is probably why it's harder. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there is no escape. And we had, we had one thing where we went, we were having a really intensive time at work. Then the following day, hopped on a plane and we went to Disney for 10 days. <laughs> Didn't talk about work at all. And then the following day, literally got off the plane, following day back into work mode. You're like, how yeah. can that happen? But it, yeah. it, it just, just happens. It just does. But we're, we're lucky when we do things, we all, our end goals are the same. And they've always been the same. And we've never had any friction over that, which is lovely. How we get there can differ massively. Yeah. And maybe cause friction sometimes. But actually, it's always reassuring to know that the end point has always been the same. And that might not always be the case. Yeah. But we've been together 10 years and without fail, it has. Yeah. So has your dad stepped back from day to day or is he still involved? Yeah. No, no, he's very much sort of consultant role. But yeah. he's found the joy of gardening and that <laughs> retirement's not a bad thing. He's still, I mean, he's still busy doing other stuff. But yeah. we... We worked hard with the succession thing. We found a lovely um, local family business who'd been through the same thing and they yeah. were very generous with their time. Yeah. And the parents, we all went out for lunch and the parents were chatting to our parents because yeah. I think as a family business, when you go through succession, because you've never done it before, you kind of feel that nobody else has done it before. Yeah. And they were really lovely. And just letting dad realise, okay, this is normal. And it's not to be rushed and he's not being pushed out. Yeah just a different time but I suppose when your identity and self-worth is so wrapped up in something that you founded yeah. I think it's different but that that's his baby that's what he's worked for yeah 
to then almost be being knowing you've got to go but kind of feeling pushed out even though he was saying i really want this when you're actually doing it it's really tricky yeah and it's about purpose isn't it hmm. a change of purpose maybe yeah so i mean he's still got lots to do but now he's realized that he's doing it and he's choosing it rather than being yeah. on him which is yeah. great and we still you would regularly ask for help he's still the chairman we have meetings every quarter as, mm. as board of directors they're very much still involved but it's he's not leading it and he's and he's proud of that Excellent. so that's fine but it, yeah it took a while because let's go in fact i interviewed someone yesterday and i said and how are you getting on with your daddy he said well i've just furloughed him <laughs> <laughs> so now he can't now he can't talk to me about oh, brilliant. <laughs> That's a great oh, that's, idea. That's a great succession tip. <laughs> Every cloud. Every, exactly, totally. Okay. So, um, hand, it? so we're going through this pretty shitty time as businesses, as family businesses. Um, how has that tested your relationship with your sister? Has that been something that you're really glad you're at the helm together because there's no one else you could have got through this with? Or have you found that one of you has struggled with it? I mean, how has that worked? Um, at the minute, I think we are, if I'm completely honest, it's not head in the sand at all, but we are keeping things as, much, as normal as we can. I'm more the planner of the team. Mm. So I'm sort of looking at it. She's pushing forward with some, some grant work, some development work we were doing, uh, because hopefully this is only a match of weeks temporary and then we're all ready to hit the ground yeah. running. So she's sort of focusing on the day-to-day -day stuff. I'm sort of, with her agreement, looking at more, how we can drive and maybe change the company yeah. to reflect if we know what's going to happen in a few weeks time yeah you know, we know we're going to get recession we know our companies that tenant are going to struggle maybe a few of the contractors that we use don't exist anymore yeah. so it yeah i think what what's nice is we've accidentally fallen into our parts mm -hmm. i mean we can't see each other we we facetime every day we keep very much in touch, but actually I think it's probably, we're just doing our thing in our own little bubble day to day and then sort of keeping in touch and seeing how it's going. And has this taught you anything about yourselves or each other or your families? I think it's, as a family, I think it's been really good for mum and dad to recognise that we are on it. They knew we were on it, mm. but there's nothing like a, a global pandemic just to <laughs> test how on it or not you are yeah. and the fact as i said to you i found personally it was a struggle at the beginning just with the pressures of family family health you know how it is you don't bless you with your your child i mean you do anything to keep them safe yeah while also trying to protect not just your business but your livelihood that is what's protecting and looking after the family and i've struggled under pressure more than i realized i would but that gave me sort of a okay good i've done that i've been honest with how i felt to people i'm not trying to pretend i'm coping when i'm not that seems pointless to me and now i'm back on it um and i felt people like yourselves um a lot of literature i've been reading it i'm doing an mba at the minute part-time mba just to add to the fun and games <laughs> but i found that really useful yeah. because i've been doing a lot of reading in america as well a lot of the literature there and a lot of the papers here just to try I'm a bit boring like that. I like I like my research papers. So, but just to give me a bit of calm, you know, as you say, the Daily Mail and all the rest are good at sensationalising stuff, aren't they? <laughs> just taking a step back from that and going, right, yeah. what's actually happening? Yeah. Let's take away the semantics and, and the inflaming and the panic and all that. Like, what is actually happening? And that's been good. Because mm. yeah. I think a lot of business owners talked about paralysis earlier. I think at some point in their lives have been paralysed by something, and, and it may happen every day. Mm. But I think what this has taught us, I don't know about you, is how to recognise that that's okay to yeah. have that moment in time, to want to cry your eyes out, to want to scream the roof down, and then to move on. Yeah. How as a business yeah. owner and a leader to pick yourself up, say, that's all right, that's okay, I can do that, but I need to move on. And that's hard. Yeah. It is hard, but I feel it's almost been collectively we've been allowed to do that. Yeah. I think what I like about it is, I mean, <laughs> I'm in the girls' playroom, you can see the chaos we've allowed to be more human yeah i think that's been really beneficial and i felt that i've never felt sort of a 1990s power suit kind of person that's no. not who i am but i kind of felt we were moving towards that again a little bit and i think this is just normalized people have lives people are scared people have families that they're looking after 
old or young and people are concerned and it's, we've been allowed to go, yes, but then as leaders, take a good look and go, okay, so with that background for all of us, how do we, how do we move on? And I, it's been a really testing time, but a good time. I think we'll, without sounding far too American about it, I think we'll come out stronger as a result. I know I am personally and our company will be stronger. We might suffer in the short term because we'll be in recession, but how we deal with that will be stronger than how we would have dealt with it previously. And so you, you say, you say you and your sister are the only two sort of on the payroll, if you like, and you contract yeah. everything else. So that in this day and age is actually quite a smart business model, isn't it? Because it means that you are not now left with thousands and thousands of pounds worth of overheads of staff. Yeah. Following. So has that taught you something about your business and the, has it sharpened your focus on any aspects of it? We are always trying to balance between the family bubble and bringing someone else in. So we, having a man, we have a management agent at the minute who looks after the commercial properties for us or alongside us. And we keep trying with bringing them in house and, and other people as we want to grow. Our growth capacity is limited by the fact it's just the two of us. Yeah. But my sister has a three-year-old. I've got my two. So we made the decision until uh, my niece is probably at school. We'll just, we'll consolidate. You know, we, won't, we don't need to grow at the minute family businesses is a priority spending time with our children and just getting things in order and by chance it's worked out well <laughs> now but i think it, it really as you say is brought into focus we are so streamlined in that respect which is great but it is limiting mm, okay. you know if we did want to grow we can't do it like this yeah yeah so now it's perfect let's be, let's be honest i i don't know how you guys do it you know i don't have to worry about my employees Mm. and their welfare and their families because they don't have them mm. and i i'm relieved about that i won't lie yeah you know, absolutely. i really because how how people are doing that and trying to look after everyone in such really difficult circumstances on top of your own mm. concerns mm. Is, is a huge weight and and i applaud everyone doing that but whilst it's lovely to be doing this it does sharply bring into focus that if we want to grow when we want to grow we have to bring people in mm. Mm. And we have to release some of the <laughs> family control because <laughs> it's the bubble. It's the shortcuts, isn't it? It's just easier and quicker. Absolutely. But Absolutely. it is limiting. You need to find a cousin or something. <laughs> no, I don't want my cousins. In there. <laughs> I love my cousins hugely, but no. <laughs> um, okay. So in terms of moving forward, so, you know, you batten down the hatches, we get through this. Um, you're a very lean business in terms of your core. Um, overheads what what do you feel like the future looks like in the next you know post coronavirus what did you two have planned for the future and has that changed no it's 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 completely reaffirmed what we wanted to do actually so we've been um so nottingham city has pledged to be carbon neutral by 2028 wow. um and there will be a lot of legislation building wise prior to that anyway and so we as a listed building have certain restrictions but what we have been planning and we're planning on rolling out over the next few years anyway is improving or maximizing the sustainability of our building okay however that manifests itself um there's a lot of work behind the scenes that we're doing with historic england and the councils because they don't actually know how it applies to listed buildings it's all right saying you've got to be b rated epc all that jazz but life's not like that in no listed world um you can't really do much so we're we're working with them still behind the scenes that's all going on um and it yeah it's just it's really focused that what we have been planning we can still do and actually in the post-corona world is more relevant i've been following uh professor joseph allen at harvard he's just launched the healthy buildings book and that's something that we've been working hard in terms of how we can make our buildings healthy for our tenants and for their employees. Mm. Um, and this has really brought certainly the, the health aspect into focus. Brilliant. And how we can audit our buildings and MOT them and, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. So that really, if it was important before, it's massively important now. So yeah. it's nice. And it's nice to feel positive about it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think you need as a family business to get there, to grow, you know, 
what do you need as people what do we need as people i think we need support i think because we are tiny we're a tiny family business we sort of get almost left behind mm. by our own selves you know we we sort of have our own little bubble and we keep ourselves to ourselves and we don't access people like yourself we don't access things that are out there so we need to do that mm -hmm. i think the sport is out there it's up to us to go out and do it it's easy to sit back and go not be complacent but know what we can do and that's one of the things that i'm doing is just going out a bit more and finding out the support that's there and using it we've mm -hmm. got good financial support from our bank they've got no problems with that um might it be the time to look at getting someone else in when this is all done? Who knows? It'd be a big step. Mm. But again, that would be talking to people because I would hate for someone to come in and feel out of the loop because they're not in the family. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, that's a whole different kind of worm to deal with, isn't it? It is, but there are millions of family businesses who have been where you are. Mm. And that's yeah, the point. To learn from that. And that's the point of community is, you know, there's people that can save you weeks and years of heartache because yeah. they've done it themselves <laughs> they've done it. They've done it. and there's no point making the same mistake you know no. it's, well it's a very good example of this pandemic that's been going across the globe and people have not thought let's learn from what's gone before us you know that's the whole point yeah. of community you know you like you say when you feel like you're going through succession you feel like you're the first and only family to have yeah. ever done it there are millions and what is what is lovely as well uh, we are we are blessed and slightly smug in a way to be a family business because there is that wanting to help other family businesses. Mm -hmm. We're all at different stages. We can all help in different ways and we want to help each other because it's just a, a whole unique set of circumstances. <laughs> unique is a very polite word. Well, yeah, that's the only <laughs> one I'm allowed to use in public. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what do you want to achieve? So in your life, when you look back, I mean, your dad can look back. I mean, what a legacy. You know, he is just amazing. So what mm. do you and your sister, what do you want to say you have achieved? Because it's not just, I know it's not just the, the, the property stuff, is it? You do loads of charity work, philanthropy and, and all that sort of stuff. So what, what is your legacy going to be? I think we, we want to continue the work that dad started. But what we want to do, um, my sister and I, is sort of as an extra layer to that. So just with the change in, in world, we want to make... Spenbeck is synonymous with regenerating the lace market. But that was first generation. Second generation, we want to be synonymous with making the lace market as environmentally sustainable as it can be. And also to drive more the philanthropic work that we as a family are able to do. Mm. We've sort of, we've all got our areas, which is really nice. So we cover it. So for me, I want to be able to be proud to look at those buildings and know that in 150 years they'll still be there yeah because we've looked after them properly and well um they deserve to be there i want to be able to walk through the lace market and have people go wow this is a really good place to live and work and have driven that we've been so much with market leaders for so long it's really important to keep that we've slipped a little bit and we want to keep that but not from a not just from a financial competitive advantage point of view just from a we just feel very passionate about the buildings. They're kind of like siblings to us. Yeah. You know, when, when dad and his brother started, I was very young, shall we say. Um, so I've grown up with them and they're, they're family members. And then because of that, we are able to be in a position to help others, be it charity or time or, or networking people together, whatever, that's what I would like to do. And it's kind of a continuation of, of dad but feeling with my own little weird input on the side <laughs> I, i'd say certainly for me i haven't learned anything it's about the power of community here community yeah. as in your team of staff community is in your family and your wider family but community is in actually it's the local businesses within a 10 mile radius of you that are the ones that matter and if we can all look after our own little communities yeah. you know and i you know exactly. delivering sunday roasts and you know Oh, yeah. There's a local farm to us doing a milk drive through, you know, it's, it's all those wonderful things. And you just think they're the things that matter. This is where we've chosen to place our roots and mm -hmm. yours are in Nottingham. And actually, you know, I think that's amazing that you're thinking about the bigger picture, not just the bricks and bricks and mortar, really. Well, we're, we're really lucky that we've been, I think 
if we're honest, in the early days, it was about saving the building. Oh. From that, I'm not sure, maybe I'm, I'm doing him a disservice, but I'm not sure my dad and his brother understood the power of the community that would come from that. Mm -hmm. But because it's come from that, it's inherent to us that that's part of what we are there to do and we want to do it. So we have um, the Nottingham Archaeological Society have been our tenants rent free for 20 odd years now because they would collapse if they had to, they haven't got any money to pay any rent. Why wouldn't we have them? Yeah. You know, it's all part of the heritage and the rich fabric of Nottingham. Why wouldn't we do that if we are in a position to help? Definitely you know, and promoting the local businesses and doing what you can. And I think the pandemic has really brought that out in lots of people that maybe didn't realise they had it there. Mm. It's lovely to see the communities coming together mm. and I hope it continues. And isn't that what it's all about? It's not I about think. the quick buck and the next quarter or the next five years. It's about the next generation. Yeah. And that it's you, nice. Yeah. you make very different decisions because of that. You do. And they're not always necessarily the right ones or seemingly the right ones to other people and you do give up short-term gains maybe yeah. but that's okay because you say you're looking as a, as a generational view and it's, that's quite liberating in a way mm. but also I think that's partly what limits us in terms of expanding and employing other people is we can make that decision as a family we make that as a force and we look at our finances we look at where we are and think well we can do that yeah. if we have employees coming in it's a different dynamic. They have different needs. And, and for us, we're not used to that. Mm, mm. So that would, that would be something to look at. But because I do think it is, it's kind of a closed like little bubble, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but isn't, isn't that why family businesses are so successful when they are? Mm. You know, because they have only got themselves to answer to. Mm. It is lovely to sit there and go, right, I need to make a decision. Okay, done, yeah, fine. Done, done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yes or no? So, Although, you know, you see yourself as a very, very small business, but you, you have a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and you're going through this yourself. So there will be lots of other small businesses out there where it's just the, you know, the core family involved. What would you sort of, what advice would you give someone who's having a bit of a crap day, is having a dark time, is thinking, I don't know if we can get through this. You know, what, what have you learned and what advice would you give to someone out there? I think you can get through this. And I think, having the strength of resolve because it's a family business is really powerful. And because we are, you, as we just said, you used to thinking about the long term, just batten down, streamline and, and have faith because it is your family business and it means how much more that I think you somehow find reserves you didn't think you had. And, and it just, just happens because you want it, you desperately need it and want it to happen because it means more. Brilliant. Thank you, Becky. <laughs>